Um, good morning, and my name is Kat Miller, and I'd like to welcome you to Open Circle on behalf of the Steering Committee, who is a group of people who keep the space for this to continue on and on and on. If you'd please turn off your cell phones, that would be fabulous. Everybody would appreciate that. And today's Open Circle mission statement is going to be read by Jenny Hunter. Try it again. Buenos dias. <laughs> Once again. Buenos dias, mis amigos. Gracias. Open Circle mission statement. Open Circle provides a supportive environment to gather for social interaction and to improve our understanding of ourselves, our community, and our world. Presentations span a wide range of intellectual, cultural, physical, and spiritual topics. We do not necessarily agree with the ideas and philosophies of our presenters. We encourage you to listen with an open mind and form your own opinions. Gracias. Thank you. Open Circle is looking for presenters. Our time, we have a couple of slots, I think, in August, and then we don't have anything open for a while. But please feel free to speak to Margaret Van Avery um, here if you're interested in speaking or you might know somebody or you just want to learn about the process. You can also go on to our fabulous website, and it'll, it'll show you Open Circle Ahiha ahiheek.org will uh, show you what you need to do and what it kind of takes to be a presenter. It takes chutzpah for one, I'll tell you. Um, so please feel free to speak to Margaret. And if you're not on our email sign-up list and would like to be, you can do so on a sign-up sheet underneath the big tree, or you again can go on to opencircleahiheek.org and you can sign up there. And that way you get all the notifications and you can see what we're up to and what we've been up to and you can see photographs of people and things. You can also Google Open Circle Ahiheek and you will see uh, uh, YouTube will come up, and 150 past and present videos are available of, of sessions from the last seven years. He, uh, Brad is still uploading them. Eventually, in, a, I don't know, 10 to 20 years, he'll be all caught up, and um, we'll have everything for you. So those are free for you. So that's a really wonderful combination that Brad and uh, the steering committee put together. We'd like to welcome those of you who are here for the first time. So if you are, would you please stand up? Nothing bad will happen. We'd just like to acknowledge your presence. So if you're here for the first time, all right. Welcome. Nice to have you here. Um, I'm going to uh, semi-entertain you with some jokes. The first one, I don't like the, the word henpecked, but I, I really don't like henpecked. And I'm wondering if somebody accused me of that years ago. But anyway, uh, <laughs> a henpecked husband was advised by a psychiatrist to assert himself. You don't have to let your wife bully you, he said. Go home and show her you're the boss. The husband decided to take the doctor's advice. He went home, slammed the door, saw his wife, and growled. From now on, you're taking orders from me. I want my supper right now, and after you get it on the table, go upstairs and lay out my clothes. Tonight, I'm going out with the boys. You're going to stay home where you belong. Another thing, do you know who's going to tie my bow tie? I certainly do, said his wife calmly, the undertaker. <sighs> Don't you hate it when someone answers their own questions? I do. <laughs> A little girl climbed up onto her grandfather's lap and asked, Did God make me? Yes, said Grandpa. Did he make you too? Yes. Well, the girl said, looking at his wrinkles and thinning hair, he sure is doing a better job nowadays. <laughs> How we doing? One evening, a husband, thinking he was being funny, said to his wife, perhaps we should start washing your clothes and slim fast. Maybe it would take a few inches off your butt. 
His wife, was, yeah, you all know this is, that, that was not a good idea. The guy's an idiot, right? His wife was not amused and decided that she simply couldn't let such a comment go unrewarded. The next morning, the husband took a pair of underwear out of his drawer. What the heck is this, he said to himself as a little dust cloud appeared when he shook them out. Kathy, he hollered into the bathroom, why did you put talcum powder in my underwear? She replied with a snicker, it's not talcum powder, it's miracle Grow." What's the difference between ignorance and apathy? I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> How are we doing? I think we're good? Okay. Words of wisdom for today. The only person who is with us our entire life is ourselves. Be kind. <laughs> Next week's presentation, Playing Around Creatively, presented by Reverend Don Brudeau. The creation of something new is not accomplished by the intellect, but by the play instinct acting from inner necessity. The creative mind plays with the objects it loves. That's a quote by Carl Jung. When we retired to beautiful Lakeside, many of us embraced the creative activities we had denied ourselves earlier. Philosophy, psychology, theology, art, the major disciplines of the human intellect and heart have extolled this need to create through playfulness. Don's piano will assist with this exploration. He's a wonderful pianist. Devin, Reverend Don Brudeau served as minister to Unitarian Universalist congregations throughout the United States and England for nearly 40 years. Before that, he was a teacher in the Philippines, Iran, and American Samoa. A professional jazz pianist, he has given concerts for numerous causes. He is an author, actor, singer, marathon runner, and global traveler. He has two daughters and two granddaughters. He and his partner share their lives with eight rescued animals. So please join us all next week when Don plays with us. Is that quite the way to say it? Okay. <laughs> Today's centering moment is being led by Jana Reichardt. Thank you, Kat. Hmm. Kat said a moment ago that many of us would rather be anywhere except with the thought of our own vulnerability. Um, so this moment as we, this morning, as we spend these next three short minutes contemplating something, perhaps that might be our own vulnerability, our impermanence. So as we take these next few breaths, as we notice breathing in and breathing out in this moment, as we consider and accept our mortality, our vulnerability, perhaps we recognize that with that acceptance, we cultivate a much greater appreciation for each one of these moments, each one of these breathing in and breathing out for we never know which one will be the last. Each, each breathing in, each breathing out, accompanied by sensation, calming the mind and focusing the attention. Sometimes it's useful to just notice those sensations, breathing in, breathing out. What sensation accompanies that in-breath, that inhalation? Perhaps you notice the cool air moving over the upper lip as it enters the nostrils. Or maybe you're noticing the tensing and relaxing of the diaphragm. The rising and falling of the chest. Just noticing. Appreciating. One breath at a time. One moment at a time. 
each moment a precious gift. Recognizing, too, that each moment brings a choice. A choice to be here, in the moment, present to what is. Or to be lost to it, thinking about the future, remembering the past. Always a choice. Thank you. Mm, that was beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> this week's presentation, Stroke, the first four hours, presented by Dr. Gabriel Varela Rizzo and Dr. Jose Ernesta Led Ledesma Gonzalez. Advances in knowledge, the development of new drugs, and more advanced technology have increased hope for a better quality of life after stroke. But for these advances to be useful in practice, it is necessary for patients to be aware of them and act quickly in emergency. Our goal is to increase awareness so that you will know what to do immediately following the first signs of stroke and be able to avail yourself of timely therapy. Please join me in welcoming our two doctors that are speaking to us this morning who are going to inform us and be useful to us. Now, okay. Okay, like this is much better. Yes. Okay. Okay. This is my honor be here in front of you. Uh, I know you. You are uh, people who who like the general culture, and at this time uh, we we have an speak. Uh, I believe very important for for everybody. We were talking about the uh, about the second cause of uh, mortality in the United States and almost in all the world. This, this is a, the stroke. Okay. The the purpose of this speak is that uh, give you some important tips that uh, help you in the future for save your life or you can help to other people for for make uh, very quickly the 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 call to to the doctors or to the hospital and make the the first steps for save not only your life uh, save uh, many times the, the functions of the brain. You know, the, the brain is uh, the most important organ to life. In, in the brain, we have all the functions, motor functions, sensitive functions, and cognitive. Then when, when we have a, a problem to the brain, the the results could be or the death or a very bad disability. But the good news is that uh, at this time in the 21st century, 
the, the management and the results are very different to 20 years ago or, or to the past. Okay, science and technology uh, are help to the humanity for make a better future when people has this problem. But on the other hand, at this time, because uh, the, the science and technology, the hope of life to people is almost 20 years more than, than before. Then, this is uh, very good, but uh, the, the ideal uh, elderly is with a very good health. But with the hope of life or of more years, we have more people with diabetics, more people with uh, high blood pressure, more people with uh, plaques in the arteries of cholesterol, or then people are in more risk than before to have uh, an strokes. Now, uh, I know that, the, that you use uh, the word stroke almost all for, for ischemic strokes. But uh, I would like to divide in two different kinds of strokes. The, uh, the theme today is the ischemic stroke, but there are other strokes that is a hemorrhagic stroke. This is important too. The hemorrhagic stroke is when, when people have an aneurysm, or arteriovenous malformation that explode and, uh, and, and ha the people has a bleeding inside the, the brain or in the subarachnoid space. But uh, this is very, very important theme, but is theme for, for other day. In, in today, we will talk about the ischemic strokes, okay? And on the other thing, there are another condition that uh, many people know about that, is a transient ischemic attack, the TNA, the famous TNA. Uh, this, uh, this problem is uh, very similar to a ischemic stroke, but the key is a word of transient. The, the signs or symptoms are for less than 24 hours, and people recover everything. Or everything about uh, talking about the functions of the brain. But uh, many people are very lucky to have a TNA at the, at the first time because this is a very important alarm sign for a study with image, MRI, CAT scan, uh, Dopplers uh, of the carotids and the vertebral arteries in the, in the neck, then this is an alarm for a study and most important for try to avoid in the future a truly ischemic stroke. Uh, <clears throat> I know that, uh, I, I believe that uh, everybody knows somebody who, who had a stroke in the past. Unfortunately, it could be a, a relative, very close relative of you, or a friend or, or some people to, to have that. And uh, when I start uh, this speak, I, I talk to you that uh, the conditions are changed in this time than 20 years ago. The science and technology uh, give us uh, this, uh, this good news, but the most important thing is the time. Then this is very important to communicate, to call to an em emergency services 
for start the management very, very fast, very quickly. And here we, we have an acrostic that uh, is fast. Then, when your relative or you start with face dropping or arm weakness, speech difficulty, this is a time to call to emergency. <clears throat> the first four hours are the critical hours for uh, an opportunity treatment. If people has a stroke at the 2 a.m. and nobody is with them and and they, they call at nine, then the, the time is, uh, is uh, uh, over that, uh, that uh, four hours, and then the management that we can, we can do it is uh, the conservative management with uh, blood thinners and other things, but the, the, the damage to the area that has uh, the ischemic uh, infarction is, is lost uh, forever. Functions probably with uh, a lot of time, with uh, uh, exercises of rehabilitations, could be uh, coming uh, not 100%. There are uh, less uh, probabilities of recovery of the brain functions. But when people call immediately or one uh, hour uh, after, a half hour after, we can do it uh, many things. Remember, we are in, in the area of Ajijic, Chapala, River, River of the, the Chapala Lake. We are very close to Guadalajara. We can stay there in 40 minutes. And on the other hand, uh, this management is very important that you go in with an specialist. Because uh, unfortunately, when, when you go in with a general practitioner, or can lose very important time. Okay? Then here the, the, the key of that is when you call to, to emergency, then we will start with, uh, with uh, management. For example, <clears throat> in my case, if you call me when in a very good time, I can tell you that uh, you going, or sometimes I'm going to, to your house, make uh, the, the first step for, for stabilize, or we use uh, Ajiji clinic or Mascara clinic, but you know those are a very small clinic without uh, an important infrastructure. But we can to stabilize everything, and at the same time, when, you, when I receive the first call, at this time, I call to, to Guadalajara, to Dr. Ernesto Ledesma or other neurologists of our group, and they know about that patient, and they make all the, the steps for waiting uh, the, the patient in the hospital in Guadalajara. In the meantime, I start with the, with the opportunity management, stabilize everything, and we going to, to the hospital in Guadalajara. And uh, uh, patients going directly to uh, CAT scan, tomography. In the first hours, the tomography is unable to give us an uh, direct information about uh, or, or of infarction, but they are several indirect signs that give us an information that something is in develop 
an ischemic uh, problem is in develop. And then there are several, several things for a stop and not only stop, for recover or rescue the brain tissue that uh, is uh, with damage. This is, uh, this is very, very important and the results uh, sometimes are dramatically good. I don't know if dramatically in, in English is, 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 is in a good use, but the, the, the changes of the results are very, very different when Dr. Ledesma start with uh, catheterization and making the, the techniques for, uh, for open the arteries, for remove the, the clot, for uh, give, a, uh, for give to the patient again the circulation by arteries. But this is, this is more, more specialized and that, that uh, speak is for Dr. Ledesma. Doc, Dr. Ledesma and me, uh, we are uh, ne neurosurgeons. But Dr. Ledesma is a brilliant young neurosurgeon and has another specialization, the uh, endo, endovascular neurosurgery. And with, the, with that technology, I, I am uh, uh, his assistant sometimes, and I was a, a witness many times of uh, amazing results when when people has the the opportunity management okay then uh, i i will give the 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 microphone to dr ernesto ledesma thank you very much and and then we we have a, a minutes for answer and, and questions for any doubt that that you have Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you for being here. I am Ernesto Ledesma. I am endovascular neurosurgeon. I am director to Revive. Revive is a center for cerebrovascular disorders. It's in Guadalajara. We have two centers in Puerta de Hierro Sur in the south of the city, and in the middle of the city, in uh, Centro Cardiovascular de Occidente. We have many people to uh, uh, attending this catastrophic illness, but the most important uh, to be here um, for us is an honor to be here again, because the, the stroke is the second cause of the death in the world. Every four families, four, five families has an, a person with a stroke. Every 40 seconds suffer a stroke. Minor stroke, major stroke, but this stroke. And provoke a lot of uh, uh, this cap uh, incapability to the persons. Okay. What is the best uh, thing to know to 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 do, uh, to don't have a stroke, avoid the stroke? It's the best. It's the best because if you don't have a stroke, you are good. Uh, no, and where, where where is this? It's the preventive medicine. It's the best, not the treatment. It's the best. The preventive medicine. It's very important to lose weight, like me now. <laughs> It's very important blood pressure. It's very important cholesterol, diabetes, and very important medication. Some papers, some publish around the world, is uh, got out every day. New England Journal of Medicine, JAMA, Cleveland Clinic, uh, uh, Washington University, and all the papers ab uh, uh, speak about the stroke. Why? Because in the last 10 years, 
the most revolutionary uh, papers published in around the neurologies is the straw. Why? Because change dramatically the treatment. Because nobody knows after the revolutionary area all the people things. When the people suffer a stroke, he needs in the best tracheostomy, gastrostomy, and help for the family. In this moment, around the world, change the paper. Because the patient with a stroke is possible to treat. It's possible to treat in the first four hours is the best because the patient could be candidate to thrombolysis. It's a medication for the IB, okay? And we need some criteria. But we have always nowadays 24 hours to treat a stroke. Depends of the patient, depends of the case. It's not a magic case. The stroke is not magic. No, it's a catastrophic illness. That's the way because the best uh, form to avoid the stroke is avoid. Okay? Again and again and again. And the second thing for me, the most important is this. Not this, this. Okay? You, if you have confidence with your medicine, your, your medical doctor, okay, no problem. But the most important, we publish a study in Mexico City, and the people know when the people suffer a stroke, I have my headache, and I don't move my arm, and go to the clinic, and eh, you have nerves, maybe you pass. No, 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 no. When the people suffer a stroke, and 70%, 8%, when the people suddenly don't move the hand or leg, suffer a stroke. It's very, very important. This acrostic FAST, F-A-S-T, is the Cincinnati scale, okay? It's published in U.S. and changed dramatically, okay, in the signs to the stroke. Again. When the people don't move suddenly, acute, immediately, one part of the body, the people suffer a stroke 78%. It's very important to know. And another thing to do is very important is publish also in many countries in around the world, in Europe, in Asia, in US, okay. When the people suffer a stroke, what is better? Is a small clinic, is a hospital, is in helicopter, is in car, is in dunk, where? The people come. The most important is when the people suffer signs, don't move uh, his body immediately. No small clinic. It's lost time. You need to go to the hospital immediately. It's better to go to the hospital and not uh, spend time in the, a little clinic. Why? Because the brain is clock. Okay? It's very important to oxygen, okay? Hypertension, control, oxygen, and go to the hospital. A comprehensive stroke center. Because the comprehensive stroke center changed dramatically Okay, the result, okay, and the follow-up of the patient with the stroke. Okay? It's very important this. Because some people, okay, you go talk to the clinic, uh, maybe hydration, you are nervous. No, 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 no. No, no. It's a huge problem. Every second when you wait to go to the clinic, to the comprehensive stroke, when you have symptoms, the Neurons die. And the neurons dies is will in uh, envejecimiento, I don't know, is, uh, when the people oldest, okay? Traduce in oldest. For example, if you wait with a person suffer a stroke and you wait almost four hours, you uh, oldest, okay? Maybe 20 years. That's the reason because it's important. 
Okay, this is a stroke has two parts. Ischemic stroke is this fast, F-A-S-T, don't move immediately. And hemorrhagic. Hemorrhagic, the most important for the age of 50, 40, for 50, 60 is subarachnoid hemorrhage, aneurysm hemorrhage. Is suddenly, immediately headache, the most worse in your life. This kind of symptoms is hemorrhage suraban. And the subarachnoid, subar, subarachnoid hemorrhage has treatment. Around the world, in 90% of, 90%, sorry, 90%, treat with endovascular procedures. No open the brain, no open the skull. Everything abra, uh, about the femoral artery. Okay, w every case we need to individualize. Not all the patient could be good for treatment for thrombolysis IV in the stroke, or not all the patient could be treated for catheterism. All the patient has a good opportunity, and you know the symptoms, very important. First, first, very important, first, avoid the stroke, okay? Be careful with your body, with the blood pressure, your medication, okay? And good, uh, eat good, okay? Vegetable, Mediterranean diet is the best. Uh, it's the best, it's published. Second, to recognize the signs, the stroke, fast. A face, drooping, arm weakness, speech, difficult and time to call. No lose the time. Go to the comprehensive stroke. Okay? This is the best way to have a good life with the person suffer a stroke. We are a, a center to a, a specialist in the stroke center. We do uh, all the procedures for endovascular. We have all cerebrovascular too, okay? It's very important to know for me about the stroke, <laughs> number one, and number two, to recognize the stroke. When they treat all the patient, when the patient after four hours, we do catheterism in the brain, okay? It's in the vascular framing with retriever. It's a, a stent, like a heart a stent. It's a stent in the brain and retire the cloud and reopen circulation. When is better? When the patient is calm early. Illogical. If the patient come early, we can do a lot of things. If the patient come late, we cannot have <laughs> much possibilities. Okay? Okay? That's my message. Sorry for my English is not <laughs> very good. No, but you have any question? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question, I see some of you, you raise your hand. A mic will be brought to you. And um, speak closely into the mic and fairly uh, slowly, okay, given the English Spanish. So, where are we going to start? Yes. If somebody has a stroke, can they just phone you? If somebody has a stroke, can they just phone you? <laughs> what, do they do? what do they do? Because a lot of people don't speak Spanish. Can you phone direct? Yes. There's going to, they're going to be handing out some magnets here as you leave, and they have all their information all on it. All your phone numbers? Yes. Yes. But who... In the, in the cartel, we have the... We have the... We have the Phone phones, numbers. The phone numbers, and we have a magnet for, for your freeze with, uh, with uh, phone numbers too. And will somebody speak English at the other end of the phone? Yes, me. <laughs> <laughs> very, 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 yes. very bad English, but uh, I can understand. No, we, we have a system. The system is Dr. Barella is here. He called, okay, he answered the, the, all the questions, and 
and eva a first evaluation. And then, if the patient suffers a stroke, we wait with all the team in a comprehensive center, okay? When you are uh, arrive to the hospital, all the people is there, okay? CT, MRI, the, depends of your need, okay? And then, and you sweet if you need. If you have two hours, okay, trom IV thrombolysis depends. But we have in 20 minutes a stroke sen a stro alarm a stroke in our centers. And on the other hand, uh, I live here in Rivera del Pilar. My office is uh, very close to Mascara Clinic. And if you have any problem at the 2, 3 a.m., you can call me. You can call me to. to to my office, my my phone office, when it's closed, is uh, is to my cell phone, or you can call me to my cell phone. If you need me at uh, 2 or 3 a.m., I'll be there in your house, or I give you an an instructions for going to Ajiji Clinic. At the, uh, when when I hang, I call to Ajiji Clinic for say the, that the, they will receive a patient, and I'm going to to a HIHI clinic or, or Mascara clinic. Then we will start uh, very, very fast with the, the first steps. And at the first time, I call to Guadalajara with uh, Dr. Ernesto Ledesma or uh, Sergio Guzman, the, the neurologist, or, or our people, in our team in, in Guadalajara. And they will wait in for us the patient and me, and uh, going directly to CAT scan or MRI and for hemodynamic room, okay? Okay. Yes, okay. Kajibo. My question, Where are you ready? Who's talking to me? Kajibo. Yes. Right there. Okay, we'll come up to the Zebo next. Here? Oh, Go okay. Ahead. Um, I didn't hear either one of you, I don't think, talk about what I would consider a very important part of a preventive program, which is exercise. See? Exercise. Yes, yes. yes you're okay. right. Okay. You're right. It's yes. very, very okay. important. Yeah. Uh, it's probably more important than very possibly important. than s some other things. You know, I keep hearing exercise is good for this and this and this and this and, you know, the brain and everything. So Exercise and diet. The right. okay, Mediterranean diet is the most important thing for avoid that. Up in the gazebo. Thank you. I just want to, to say that I know how efficient uh, this uh, right on uh, treatment is. Because yesterday, a friend of mine had a stroke, and Dr. Varela did a great job. She's doing very well in Guadalajara now. But my question, doctor, is what about stress? What about concerns and worriness? To me, those are key factors that we need to eradicate in order to avoid having issues. Am I right? Yes, you're right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK. Yeah, here. I want to thank you for what you did for my friend, Dr. Joe Nacelli, for Susan Nacelli, how you came to her house, put her in your car. She couldn't have no body functions at all. He thought he lost his wife. You took her to the hospital. You diagnosed it. You put the hole in the brain. You got the blood off. Then two days later, you gave him the phone to call him. The amazing story you gave me, he, she calls him on the phone. He says, my husband Joe, he goes, oh, prove it, this is my husband. He says, well, look at the furniture. He says, anybody could walk in my house and look at the furniture. But he remembered the conversation just before, the day before, they talked about his mother's maiden name. He mentioned her, his mother's maiden name. She goes, oh, Joe, my husband. <laughs> but thank you so much for what you did. He oh. considers you an angel from God. Oh, oh that's nice wonderful. Time. Where are we? We're in the gazebo again? Yeah, are there any rules or, or expectations for the transportation process? Should the patient should the patient be prone or or sit up, sitting up or if we're going to rush them to the to your clinic, uh, how how should we act? Yes, uh, you know uh, we are in a little town. Then sometimes uh, I I call to to ambulance to Red Cross. Uh, other other times. Uh, uh, I can pick up in my car to, with patients sitting, sitting in, my, in my car. But when, when patient has a, a big stroke 
and they are comatose or like that, uh, the best thing is going by ambulance. Down here. Yep. Excuse me, uh, Dr. Ledesma, um, I'm confused about one thing you said. Um, you had said something about don't m move the patient, uh, and you said it a couple of times, and I'm really confused. I, I don't know what... I think you said if the patient doesn't move. No, that wasn't what... Okay. No, I, a, and I'm confused about... Um, okay, I said when the patient suddenly can move his hand or his leg immediately... No, that wasn't it, but it's okay. I don't... It's all right. Okay. Well, our, oh, well, let's just put it this way. The, let's turn the question. Is there any reason not to move the patient? No, always move. Always move the patient. There you go. Over here. If you'd stand, please. Yeah. Thank I, you. I don't understand one thing you were saying about the A little uh, closer. Cath catheterization. Uh, do you catheterize and remove the clot for everybody, even if it's a tiny stroke? No, everybody. Very good question. The patient has a classification, NIH. When the patient has any NIH or is after four hours, the patient could be a good candidate for thrombectomy, for catheterization. If the patient comes in the first four hours, maybe the patient could be a good result with IV thrombolysis. No catheterization, but if it's failed in the first, hour, in the first one hour, okay, the patient passes to the catheterization. If the patient in acute moment is very strong, the stroke, a, a huge deficit, the patient comes through immediately to catheterization. And here, Dr. Ledesma, you mentioned about prevention. Could you but hold you it a little bit closer? I'm sorry. You mentioned about prevention. Of Exercise is very important. Yeah. <laughs> very important. Sorry. What about what about people who smoke? Four uh, four times as people have a four times as many chances to to get a stroke if they smoke, and they're twice as likely to die from a stroke if they smoke. So, would you say that? People should stop smoking, even though <laughs> <laughs> this audience is on you. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I need my slideshow. <laughs> we are where? Who's got it? Oh, there you go. We'll try to come back to you, sir, in a minute. I appreciate that we have these numbers to call in the middle of the night or whatever time. But in my experience, there's always a situation where no one answers the phone. What happens then? Go to the hospital. What hospital? Uh, he, he, if you live here, uh, uh, he clinic, and they call me, they call me. Uh, One of my uh, neighbors last week had a stroke. They took her to uh, he, he What hospital? It. A specific question. Puerta de Hierro Sur. It's our main uh, oh. center on, of the stroke. Because we can drive there yes. if we have to. Or it's or better. Or. It's better to wait. It's better. Or, or call to the Red Cross to, for ambulance and going there. To Puerto, to Puerto de Hierro, Hierro sir. Uh -huh. it's, it's closer. It's a closer hospital. To here. To Guadalajara to, okay, to here. thank yes. you. Okay, we, we've got to do this one at a time. We're going to get as many <laughs> questions as we can. Please stand. And then over, yeah, there you go. I have a couple of questions. One, uh, is there any value of taking an aspirin when you, uh, when you have signs? So if it's a hemorrhage, an aspirin is not good. If it's, uh, what did you call this other kind? It is good? This, Systemic. Th this question is amazing. But why? When you have a stroke, you have 80% more possibilities to ischemic stroke. That's the reason because the patient don't move immediately, aspirin is good. No problem. One baby aspirin or five of them? 500 milligrams for aspirin. 500 milligrams? 500 milligrams. In acute. Okay. okay so no prevention. Away. No prevention. In acute. For, for 
prevention is baby aspirin or 100 okay. milligrams. Okay, prevention is baby aspirin. If you've, if you've got the signs for fast, they get a 500 milligram. 500. Okay, and um, the, the other question is, uh, I'm, I'm confused a little bit about get to the big hospital fast or get to the small clinic fast. Which one? No, if, uh, we, we can to start with uh, for stabilize here, but uh, we without uh, lost time, because if you going uh, directly to to Guadalajara, sometimes uh, patient needs uh, something before here, and then it could be the the trip uh, will will be with a with a more risk. Okay, if uh, we we can to stabilize uh, at the same time, I call to to doctor, to the team, and then we're going to, to Guadalajara. Okay. Something is very important, okay, for your question. We about, we about a specific to stroke, when the people has a stroke, but when the people have symptoms, we need to evaluate because it's a mimic stroke, Hyper, hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, hypertension, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, another symptoms, okay? It's mimic stroke, okay? And when you do the evaluation with the NIH, okay, the patient NIH1 is not a stroke. It's a mimic stroke, okay? This is very important. The field evaluation is very important, okay? The NIH score. Over here. Gracias, buenos días. Uh, two hospitals are being built right now. Could you hold up yes. closer? Uh, two hospitals are being built as we speak, one on the carretera and the other one on the Libramiento of Chapala. And I wanted to ask if uh, you think they would be fully equipped for this uh, to treat strokes or would you still be needed to go to Puerta de Hierro or another big hospital in Guadalajara? Gracias. Here in the new hospitals here, uh, it is possible that they they will have a CAT scan and MRI. Remember, this is not for treatment, but this is very important for diagnosis. Then, when when the hospitals are finished here, uh, we we can to to have uh, uh, more technology here, but. For uh, if patient will need a catheterization, uh, I I believe uh, the new hospitals uh, won't have uh, a, a hemodynamic room. Then if uh, if uh, we we will have uh, more facilities for for treat at the, at the first step, but I believe. It will be necessary going to to the big hospitals in Guadalajara. The, the most important is because it's not a fancy hospital. No, it's a comprehensive stroke center. Okay, it's the most important. It's better when the people has a symptoms to the stroke to come to immediately. Why? Because time is brain. Okay, if you go immediately faster, it's better for you. Because brain is time. And Puerta del Centro Medico, Puerta de Hierro Sur, we have a lot of work to do a comprehensive stroke center. That's the reason. Here. I live alone and I live upstairs. If I had a stroke upstairs, would I be able to get myself downstairs or and open the gate? A ver. Okay, you need to call, no? You need to call. Uh, but somebody, somebody has to get the the gate open. It's very important, I think, for all of us. I've talked amongst our friends. We've talked about this a lot. Is you need to have friends that have access to your keys to your place. Claro. You know, your neighbor, your next door neighbor, and two friends, something like that, right? To set up. Yes, for that, that case, you, you have to organize uh, something like. Uh, 
like this case for for make that. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. maybe you need to bed with a cell phone. <laughs> really? No? Yeah. Have your yeah. cell phone <laughs> by your bed. Yeah. Most people do. Okay. Okay. Right here. You'll need to use the mic. Thank you for the information. Are ischemic strokes and TIAs a prelude to a big stroke? Yes, absolutely yes. The TIA, in, when the patient present TIA, the 20% the to 30% suffer major stroke if you don't treat the cows. Okay? Yeah. You need to, to avoid atrial fibrillation is a very serial uh, 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 cause to um, uh, TIA, or the most important, carotid stenosis. Okay. If the patient has carotid stenosis, need to treat. What medications are indicated? Double antiplatelets, clopidogrel and aspirin, and estatins. Aspirin and I'm sorry. Aspirin and clopidogrel. Estatins. Two. The, the most famous name of uh, clopidogrel is Plavix. Plavix. Cla Plavix. Okay. Seventy-five okay. milligrams. If the patient has carotid stenosis, if the patient has atrial fibrillation, uh, only TIA need anticoagulation, no antiplatelets. Anticoagulation. Okay. What if there are no symptoms? Again, please. No symptoms. What if there are no symptoms? No antiplatelets. If the patient not has uh, no symptoms, uh, has a, a high risk factors like uh, smoking, like a done ac exercise, no diet, big, okay, maybe he ne needs aspirin. This is ABCD score, okay, to evaluate the necessity to uh, take aspirin. Okay, our last question is in the back. Yes, thank you. If uh, no, you're I've heard that well, if you have a bit. stroke or something, it's very important to cool the head, to use ice and so on to limit the blood flow. Is is that correct? No, 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 no. Do we well, have inclusive? It could be could be bad because yes. uh, the the eyes could be closed more the the, the vascular vasoconstriction. Mm -hmm. So, do we have a whole bunch more questions? What's, how are we here? Are we good? You've got one, you've got one. Let's, let's go ahead and take a couple more. For those of you that need to leave, please just do so as quietly as possible. We appreciate that. Okay. Here, and we're back here. Could you tell me uh, what are your experience with stem cell treatment after a stroke? I don't have experience in a stem cell. Because in this moment, the publish in the uh, series uh, publish is not a good experience with that. And over here, if you can stand, that's great. And if you need to, it's okay to sit. It's okay. I, oops. I just wanted to tell you something before I ask my question. Uh, I had a stroke. Can you hold it a little bit closer to your face, mouth? Wow, it's right under my mouth. I know it is. It's amazing how close you have to hold it. Thank you. I, yeah, I had a stroke in 2006, and uh, I'm not going to tell you too much about it, excepting that uh, um, they, uh, I, was, I got to the hospital shortly, not too long after the symptoms really showed, but... Uh, uh, I um, I was uh, they took an MRI the next day and the cause of the stroke was uh, not normal I don't know how many people this may happen to it but it was a f you know there's a, you know the order goes up and, there, and there's a uh, yeah uh, it, uh, there was a fracture of the uh, artery that goes around, and that was the cause of it. Uh, I think that's probably very rare. 
Anyway, they immediately afterwards put me on uh, um, rat poison, um, warfarin. <laughs> and uh, so I'm taking that now. But uh, the, my, my question is, uh, just uh, uh, it's probably already being covered, but I, I really may have missed it, is um, the difference between going to a clinic here, uh, which is now called a hospital, um, or going up to Guadalajara. Uh, my guess is that their immediate treatment is giving you things to look after your blood, you know, to thin your blood or whatever, but just medications, okay, not operations that can't be done. Okay, let's ha they, they have covered it, but you can cover it again because it's so important. What's the difference between going to the clinic or the hospital? hospital? Absolutely different. This is changed dramatically. When the patient suffers a stroke, go to the comprehensive stroke center because it's his opportunity to be another life. Yes, better to go to hospital as fast as you can. Okay, my friend in Canada has a hyperbaric chamber, and he's done a lot of work with uh, helping people after their strokes. Where does that come in? Do we have one in, in available in Guadalajara? And do you use it at all, or where does that come into the... Uh... Hyperbaric chambers, do you use them? Hyperbaric chambers? Pressure chambers. Pressure, pressure chambers? Hyperbaric? Uh, uh, with, with oxygen. Oxi oxygen? No. 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 No, no. The, my friend uses it. We, he's recovered a lot of patients. Have recovered a lot, lot quicker the, with the, the hyperbaric. Patient, uh, when the patient suffers a stroke, is dramatically the 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 um, say so, disability, but the patient recovery in the time is not oxygen, no stem cells, no medication. No, the brain recovery in the time. When you have a ranking ranking scale to 19 days to three months is the best prognosis for the patient. Maybe a one year is the best, no more than this, okay? But the, the first, when the patient suffers a stroke is dramatically because it's as well the, the brain, but then reduce the, 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 the brain and the patient improve. In this moment, it don't exist any, any medication, any oxygen, any very published uh, good results, only time. And the most important, rehab, rehabilitation. is the most important after patients suffer a stroke. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you, doctors. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. If you could please pick up your chairs, stack them if you can. Pick up your coffee cups, your shawls, your pocketbooks, your earrings, your the badges are over there. Oh, or, magnets. magnets will be on the way out. Oh, on the way.